Well, the gospel was long enough, and Jesus explained his own parables, so I guess I don't have to say anything. No, probably not. Uh, So, in the second reading today, in the letter to the Romans, we hear St. Paul says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. Now, think about that for a little while. What are the sufferings that you're enduring in this present time? For some, they're heavier than others. Some, the greatest suffering you have is that it's not cold enough in the church and that the pews are too hard. But I'm guessing most of you have some other struggles that are much heavier than those sufferings there. Some of you I know because you've spoken to me are very, bearing very heavy burdens and great suffering. And St. Paul says, those sufferings, as great as they are, are nothing compared to the glory. Nothing compared to the glory that is going to be revealed in us. How great must that glory be to outweigh the sufferings that we have? Not just a little bit, but so much so that the sufferings we experience here will seem as nothing. I think we think too small. When we think about heaven, what do we think of? Oh, someday we'll be up on the clouds playing harps. And some of you are saying, I don't like the harp. If that's all we imagine heaven to be, ain't no wonder nobody wants to go there, at least when they say, well, this world is much better than that. But if we think that compared to the suffering we have now, the glory is so much greater that we will experience. It's much better than sitting on a cloud playing the harp. We're talking about the fulfillment of who we were made to be, to experience love in its fullness, given to us freely, and for us finally to be set free of our selfishness so that we give love freely. So Jesus then talks about how do we receive that glory? Well, we have to prepare the soils of our hearts. Because the word of God comes to us to prepare our souls to be able to say yes to God, to receive that glory. But too often, our hearts aren't ready. And he uses those four different types of soil. First, the path. You know, the seed falls on the path and the birds come and take it away. I'm guessing there probably aren't too many of us here in the church here that are just, the word comes and it just goes right out, we don't even pay attention to it. There might be someone who's been forced to come here, who's just like, I don't want to be here. Why is he taking so long? Why is the air conditioning not cooler? How come we have to be here? Okay, so maybe, so there might be one or two of you who's just, uh, the word is just on the path and being taken away and just rejecting it. And we need to pray for those people, whoever they may be. And there are some, of course, where the seed is scattered on, uh, on the rocky ground and it's not able to, to get much soil. These are the people that maybe, maybe faith is a new thing. You come and it's, ooh, this is exciting, but we haven't experienced any tribulations yet. I'm guessing there aren't too many of those out here either. Most of you look like you've been coming to Mass for a long time. Most of you look like you've been trying to live the Christian walk for a long time. And so this whole thing, it ain't news. I think most of us are in this third category. Where there's uh, the seed sown among thorns. The one who hears the word and grows. We, We live our life of faith. But because we kind of are torn between the world... And Almighty God, between worldliness and godliness, we allow the anxieties of the world, we allow the the lure of riches to keep us from being all in, as it were, in our faith. That we spend so much time playing with the things of the world and ah, 
that we're not able to bear the fruit that God wants for us. And this is where I think most of us have to be, where those thorns are, where we have to do the weeding work. Now, I can't say that I've ever enjoyed gardening. Uh, I can honestly say that in many ways I have a black thumb. You know, some people have green thumbs, I do not. Um, But there have been some times when I've had to go out and do some weeding. And in fact, as I pass by going into the school, you know, for the offices and stuff, there's every once in a while saying, I have to pull this weed and pull this weed. Uh, That that can be uh, troublesome to some extent. But if the weeds are such that they have thorns... Ouch! There's some hard work right there. We think that getting our souls ready to receive the word is some going to be some easy task. But sometimes it's like pulling thorns. Pulling those brambles. That we have to do that work in our souls in order to receive God's word so it will bear fruit and not be choked. And so there are times when we're going to have to do the hard work of saying, okay, this in my life is too much. Too much of the world. Too much lure of riches. Too much comfort. And not enough seeking the Lord. I need to pull this out. I need to pull out this weed. And it's backbreaking work, so to speak, in our souls. And sometimes we might even say, when we look at, again, following the analogy here, all the blood on our hands from pulling those thorny weeds, we say, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Then we hear again echoed the words of St. Paul, that the suffering of this world is as nothing compared to the glory to be revealed. 